Good morning, everyone. We are guests of honor accompanied by the members of the school management committee and principals to proceed to the stage for the opening ceremony. Good morning, Professor Chen, Mr. Lee, Ms. Bell, Mr. Maywald, members of the School Management Committee, principals, distinguishable, distinguishable guests, parents, teachers, and fellow students. Welcome to the presentation of students' participation and experiences at the Expo 2010, Shanghai, China. I am Shirley Singh from 6S1 and I'm Wing Tang from Success One. We are honored to have Professor Chen with us today to have the opening ceremony for our presentation. Professor Chen, President and Vice Chancellor of the Hong Kong Baptist University, is a renowned chemist with substantial experience in higher education management. He has outstanding academic achievements and was recognized by prestigious awards, such as National Natural Science Award of China, second class, and Japan Society of Synthetic Chemistry Lectureship Award. His passion, commit, commitment, and contribution to education are appreciated by educationalists. First of all, may I invite Professor Rosie Young, Chairman of the School Management Committee, to deliver the welcoming speech. Professor Young, please. Good morning, Professor Chen, members of the Senior Management Committee, teachers and students, and distinguished guests. On behalf of the school, I thank you all for coming to our students' presentation of their experiences at the Expo 2010 Shanghai, China. Our students have been enthusiastically following the development of the Expo 2010 in the past two years. They have participated in many Expo-related activities initiated by the school or in collaboration with other external organizations. One major event took place in January 2010 when the World Trade Centers Association Hong Kong invited our students to speak at the forum on Expo 2010 Shanghai, China at the Hong Kong Baptist University. We are therefore very honored to have with us today Professor Alfred Chen, Vice Chancellor and President of the Hong Kong Baptist University as our guest of honor. Since the school's inception, our objective is to make learning a pleasant experience, to encourage self-motivation in learning, and to provide a wide range of co-curricular activities in order to achieve holistic development. We have always stressed the importance of developing our students' global perspectives while being rooted in Chinese culture, and the Expo 2010 provided the perfect op opportunity for our students to gain a deep understanding of our own culture and at the same time to learn about our co other cultures in the world. A total of six different student groups from our school visited Expo 2010 as volunteer workers, visitors, and speakers. As the Expo 2010 officially came to a close in October 2010, our students have prepared this presentation of their unique experiences while reflecting on ways to follow the theme of Expo 2010, quote, better city, better life, unquote, in line with the school's science and sustainable development projects. I'm looking forward to their presentation, and I hope all of you will also enjoy it. Again, I would like to extend our he he heartfelt appreciation to Professor Chen for being our guest of honor today, and to all our guests, parents, and alumni for coming here and, support and supporting the school. Thank you.
Now, may I invite Professor Young to present the souvenir to our guest of honor, Professor Chan.
Our school encourages students in CFSS to know more about it. Let us briefly introduce what our school has done since 2008 to promote Expo 2010. First of all, our school started promoting Expo internally through holding exhibitions dated from the open day in April 2009. At the same time, a countdown timer, as you see at the back of the, set, uh, of the, of the hall, was made for the arrival of Expo 2010. The High Definition Campus TV also took part in promoting Expo to students by making a program called Expo at CFSS. Besides promoting Expo inside our school, we attended an Expo forum at Hong Kong Baptist University in mid-January 2010. Our countdown timer and some of the exhibition boards were shown at the venue and we shared our Expo project to the media. We attained valuable experiences at the forum. The questions raised by the audiences inspired all of us for more new ideas in continuing our Expo project. Our school organized a total of three tours to Shanghai. The first one was a volunteer tour with 11 former secondary 7 students being volunteers at the World Trade Center's Association Pavilion for three weeks. Later, in mid-July, a hundred teachers and students visited Shanghai Expo for six days. At last, a week before the closing of the Shanghai Expo 2010, Wei Tang and I had a valuable chance to visit Shanghai Expo. We attended a forum in the WTCA Pavilion about China's development and the importance of sustainable development in China. We also presented books about what our students have learned from Expo 2010 and introduce what our school has done related to Shanghai Expo. Apart from the tours organized by our school, some students visited Expo by, with other organizations. Four secondary seven students were selected to participate in the astronaut summer camp held in Shanghai in mid-July. Besides, six secondary two students, winners of the Green Energy Award of Hong Kong Student Science Project Competition 2010, was sponsored to take part in the Shanghai Expo Exchange Tour in late July. Koei Lee, our former Secondary 7 students, joined the Hong Kong Federation of Youth Groups to Shanghai Expo. She had the chance to exchange with students in China and experience the strong sense of belonging of national identity as a Chinese. So, today, we have students who were participants of the Expo project Volunteers tour and the education tour to share with us. Now let's pass the time to the members of the Expo project, Wing Lab from 6A and Angie Yu from 6S1, to share with us the promotion work we did in school. Wing Lab and Angie, please. Many people in Hong Kong, teenagers in particular, were oblivious of the existence of the world expositions before all the television programs based on the Shanghai Expo has shown. Our school, however, sees the Shanghai Expo as something of great meaning and held an exhibition about it. She didn't deprive us of our creative side either. A countdown timer was designed to show our anticipation towards the commencement of such an important event. And we are honored to have the chance to share our experiences during the preparatory work with you. Yes, but before sharing our experiences with you, we would first like to give you an insight to the details of the exhibition and the countdown timer. So, to introduce the students to the World Expositions, our school held an exhibition first open to public on our school open day in 2009. Our school exhibition was divided into two parts, a timeline showing most of the past expositions, as well as pavilions of various countries of Expo 2010. Besides the traditional exhibition boards, our school also took a more creative approach and crafted a countdown timer. Wait, can you tell us more about it? Of course, our countdown timer is divided into two parts. As you can see from the photo, China Pavilion, together with several representative pavilions, are on top, while tools representing different themes and muscles of past expositions are crammed into the bottom, following a pathway that starts from the bottom of the timer and spirals all the way up. I remember how we discovered the trend between the themes of world expositions over the years. 
They started out being based on agriculture, industry, and dogs, then gradually focused more on space and technology. Around these few decades, people's concerns are more on nature and environmental protection. We all thought it was a great idea to make use of this trend to represent the development of world expositions over the years. Therefore, we decided to paint a farmer in a wheat field, a windmill, and a big factory representing agriculture and industry. And around the middle part of the timer, if you follow the track, you will find a maglift train in front of a locomotive carrying coal. It means that as the world is developing, more and more new technologies were being introduced. Several wind turbines were also painted representing the fact that renewable energy is being advocated recently and that more and more people are paying attention to the place they live. The bit you see here, where the 2005 Expo mascot inhales all the polluted air, symbolizes that we humans do want a nice environment to live in, and therefore they start doing something about it, protecting the earth. Apart from the exhibition and the countdown timer, our high-definition campus TV has produced and broadcast a television program entitled Expo at CFSS. It introduces how CFSS celebrates and welcomes the first Expo held in China. And students gave detailed description on how the countdown timer was designed. And they also shared their feelings of participating in the Expo project. So, our school put a lot of effort in promoting the Shanghai Expo. However, our ideas didn't just bob out of the blue. We had to do quite a lot of preparation. Yeah, we searched the internet beforehand and visited plenty of websites in order to familiarize ourselves with the world expositions before actually working. During the preparatory work, the, pr the participating students were split into three separate groups. One to collect information about the past expositions, one to work on the board about the current Shanghai Expo, and one to design and paint our countdown timer. After all raw information from different groups were collected, the materials was categorized and added. Useful facts and figures were extracted and incorporated into our box, and then prepared for publication. The layouts of the pages were then amended so that they won't look messy, and it is then finally ready to be printed out and stapled to the board. For the countdown timer, we chose the colors of the paint seriously because we wanted the clock to look interesting so as to arouse people's curiosity towards the World Expo. And I think it, is a really, it really was a great chance to show our creativity, and we had the freedom to design and paint in our way. Although the smell of paints was irritating, our team endured it. We even had fun during the painting time because usually you don't paint at school. And I think it's a unique experience that I'll never forget. What about you? Have you learned anything in the whole process? Absolutely. Throughout the whole preparation process, there are some problems we encountered, and in many ways I think that each problem has a moral behind it. For instance, when we first started to gather information, since there is a lack of communication, we were all working in a sort of uncoordinated way, so that a lot of times the information we collected actually overlapped. Before long, we started to realize that it wasn't going to work out if we carried on working the same way. So through this whole process, we learned how to really communicate with each other, how communication is a two-way process, and not with just one person giving out commands while others jump to his orders. It's like the Shanghai Expo's theme, Better City, Better Life. To achieve this, people from all over the world have to communicate with each other and stand as one. Uh-huh. I think that this message that the Shanghai Expo brings out is very meaningful. We now live in a global village, a world that is interdependent, and the countries are interrelated with each other. So mutual understanding between countries is very important for constructing a better life. When we think about the world we would like to leave to our later generation, would it be a world where mutual misunderstanding between countries still exists and they have to fight over natural resources? Or would it be one where they can enjoy resources like the ones we are having now? Through the different pavilions in the Shanghai Expo, we can see that different countries have really paid a lot of effort into creating a better city and better life for our future generations. 
no matter in terms of the environment or the relationship between countries. We do hope that this message will always be remembered and passed from generation to generation. Lastly, we wish the future exposition's success in promoting the message of better city, better life, and a way to a better future for our next generation. Thank you. participated in the project wish to have the opportunities to serve as a volunteer at Shanghai Expo. It is too bad that most of them were not yet 18, so they were not eligible for it. However, 11 former secondary 7 students were invited to be volunteers at WTCA Pavilion for three weeks in May. Let's invite Hermian Lam, Emily Ma and Katie Yip to share their experiences at volunteers Expo 2010. Pamia, Emily, and Katie, please. Good morning, Professor Chapman, School Supervisor Professor Young, School Management Committees, School Principals, Teachers, and Students. I'm Hermia Lam, one of the student volunteers of the Expo 2010. I would like to take this opportunity to give our heartly that gratitude for giving the 11 of us a chance to serve in the Expo. This trip has enlightened us a lot and it was very meaningful to us. After finishing the A-level examination, the 11 of us had the pleasure of being sent to the expo from May 15th to June 5th. During the three week stay, we helped in the World Trade Center Association Pavilion and, we, and this has a large variety of work, volunteering work, which has enhanced our soft skills and problem solving skills. During the three weeks experience, we were required to greet people at the entrance, count the number of people, answer inquiries made by visitors, and also to translate leaflet, hand out letters, and to handle office work. A common phenomenon we faced during the three weeks was that people came to the pavilion solely for the purpose of getting the expo passport stamped. Therefore, most people would just come and go. However, most of us had the, had the chance to grasp people's attention and talk to them actively. I have learned to speak bravely to people and at the same time to be decent in speaking. I have also learned how to actively communicate to others. Now I would like to pass to Katie for the start of the PowerPoint. Thank you. And our volunteer work um, start from the 15th of May 2010 to the 5th of June. And Mr. Tom and Ms. Yi were our the leading teachers. We served at the World Trade Centers Association Pavilion, and every volunteer has their own identification. When we were on duty, we must put it on. And about the WTCA, it is a non profit and a non political association and is dedicated to promote world trade and the aim is to enhance peace and stability through trade and it functions as headquarters of all WTCs. The WTCA pavilion was in Song B and this is the appearance of our pavilion. Here is a group photo of our uniform. In fact, there was also a white head for our uniform because our uniform is very similar to those in other volunteers. We are sometimes asked by visitors about the details of other pavilions, and certainly we can overcome and solve all the challenges. One of the most um, most unforgettable tasks is to deliver the invitation letters for our honor day. And however, uh, it is a very valuable experience as we can talk with the directors from other pavilions. Um, in order to finish the task more efficiently, we need to shop the letters and des design the best route so that the maximum number of letters can be delivered within the same period. This is also a good chance for us to explore the exposition. In fact, we really faced some challenges during the delivery. For example, some recipients did not understand um, 
to Tonghua or English. However, there are some visitors that have asked a lot for translation so that we can overcome the problem and deliver the letter successfully. It is a very special experience for us. As I said before, we have opportunity to talk with the pavilion directors and we're able to visit the director's office. And there are also the second duties for us. It is to deliver the notifications to restaurants. It is for the food chain security and health week. Um, what we need to do is we need to go to the target restaurants and deliver the message to their manager and inform and invite them to come to our events. We have other, um, from this job, we are benefited that we will have another field of Shanghai Exposition and we will have um, again a chance to formally talk to important people and we have the view of success. Our another job was to translate some books and brochure from English to simplify the Chinese. Because there are only two laptops, we need to cooperate well. Some of us translate English into Chinese and some were responsible for the sentence rephrasing. We need to cooperate well in different parts in order to finish the job. And the time limit is very tight. We only have one week to finish the job. Actually, the book like comprises of um, about 20 pages and it covers the direction of our pavilion and our WTCA of facilitating the members in the next three years. This is a quite challenging part as we are new to translation, especially translating them into simplified Chinese. Um, actually, compared with the book like, the brochure was much more easier to translate. We took time to finish the task together. And our mission is to introduce um, the theme of our pavilion. One of the themes was the introduction of climate change. The board were also shown in the hall now, which were prepared by Dr. Rebecca Lee Locksey. The aim of this film is to arouse people's attention towards environmental protection, deepen our knowledge about North and South Pole, a greener future, and the message is WTCA work as a platform to spread the idea of caring the earth. Besides, some of us um, also count the uh, number of visitors that enters to our pavilion. And from this job, we discovered that most of the visitors were Chinese. They showed a broad knowledge about climate change, and most of them believe that the government can do more to improve the situation. And this is our another theme. It is Food Chain Security and Health Week. There were different programs and public activities in different weeks. The aim of this film is to improve the quality of life through higher food safety standards. It promotes company accountability for their products. And here are some photos of the board. And certainly, we also had our leisure times meeting with friends with Shanghai University volunteers also, we have some funny games, just um, as shown in the photo. Also, we deliver the photo album of our schools in order to, enjoy, to share the joy of the 10th anniversary of the Chinese Foundation Secondary School. And now, I will pass the time back to Hamid. Oh, other than the helping in the pavilions, other things we did was visiting the pavilions, other pavilions such as England, Spain, Denmark, Italy, and so on. Other than that, we also visited the Shanghai city itself. Uh, we went to the Suntin Day in Shanghai, and then Nanjing Road, and also I visited Zhou 
which was a holiday for us. Um, there was a train, train bridge we saw, and, which is a famous site. And also the Jam House and the Shen House. Um, we also went to Westlake on the other holiday. And these are the kind of food we ate during the weeks we stayed in the pavilion and outside the pavilions. We also had dinner with Ms. Lauren and also visited the Shanghai University campus. Um, we had the talk with Dr. Sun. He remarked that Shanghai University helped increase the competitiveness and also told us that we should be equipped ourselves and be equipped to the future for ourselves. We also visited the aviation catering factory, which provided food for the Southern China Airlines. The feelings we had was that it was interesting as we wore all these protective hygiene clothes. And we had also had lunch there before we went on the airplane back to Hong Kong. Here are some of the photos of the catering factory. This trip has broadened the horizons and helped us a lot to equip our future. And we also we made new friends with people um, in the pavilions, including Shanghai students. And now I'd like to pass to Emily for the things we did after the trip. Thanks, Hermia. During the last few days in Shanghai, when we made Paul, make an interview with all of us. It was published on 7 June. Back in Hong Kong, some of us conduct a talk, Tai Yim Saibok Ready Go. And a seminar was given to us. Also, we were interviewed by Sing To Daily. We enjoyed the sharing a lot. As we worked in shift, therefore during the off-duty hours, we had the pressure to visit other pavilions. In virtue of carrying the working pass along, we were able to utilize our limited time to visit pavilions such as Germany, France, Switzerland, and so on, without too much weight. The history, culture, new technology, land, the major plans of development of different countries assess our future developments and are necessary for us before entering the society. After the three-week experience, I have a better understanding of the culture of Shanghai. I found Shanghai people always take every opportunity of learning. I remember that one of the Shanghai student, uh, one of the Shanghai student, actually carried carried a pocket electronic dictionary with her and checked almost every new vocabulary she came across. She even sized the chance to talk to us in English and ask us English words that she didn't know. The attitude is something I really appreciate, and I think. It is what many Hong Kong students should learn. And other characteristics of Shanghai people that surprised me is their perseverance. Throughout the trip, I hardly heard them complain about standing all day, having to walk so much, or have so much work, work to do. However, it is not common in Hong Kong as people here always always complain. I seriously think we teenagers should learn how to treasure what we what we have. The fortunate the fortunate environment that we are living in because not everyone has the chance to educate and to live in harmony to, and to live in a harmonious environment. I have learned more about Shanghai after the, this trip. Not only did I build up my job coordination, logistic of work, morale of teamwork, spoken English and Putonghua, but also gained a friendship with some of the Shanghai students. So, if 
there were chances to learn or to volunteer, please treasure them. You might be surprised of what you might gain from it. That's the end of our share. Thank you. Thank you, Emily, Katie, and Hermione. In order to provide more opportunities for students to learn, our school organized a study tour to Shanghai in mid-July for 100 teachers and students. Now, let's pass the stage to Sam Wong and Bertha Chan from 2A to share about their trip. Good morning. Today, I am pleased to share with you what we did in the World Expo Tour in July as well as what we learned from the Expo Tour. The school has promoted Expo 2010 in different ways. The countdown timer and the exhibition held in school on open day aroused our interest in learning more about Expo. Before we set off for the tour, two things were done. Firstly, senior form students who had been to Expo 2010 and worked as volunteers told us what they had seen in the World Expo and gave us a brief briefing session. Secondly, we had had two briefing sessions before we went to the Expo. We were divided into groups and each group had to talk for information of an assigned theme of the tour and present it in the second briefing session. This prepared us better for the Shanghai tour. We had been to Shanghai for six days from 17th to 22nd of July. 85 students and 12 teachers joined the tour and we formed eight groups. On the first day, we set off and this is the photo we took in the Hong Kong International Airport. We were really excited about the trip. On the second day, we went to the Fu Tan University, the Bang, Shanghai Museum and Nanjing Road walking train. On the third and fourth days, we went to the expo site. We also went on a boat trip and enjoyed the view of Huanghu River in one evening. On the fifth day, we went to the Shanghai Volkswagen Company Limited and the Zhujiazhou Water Town. Before leaving, we visited the historical cultural district of Shanghai. In this presentation, we would like to focus more on the visit at the expo site. The first pavilion we are going to introduce is a China Pavilion. All of us were longing for visiting China Pavilion. At the four sides of the China Pavilion, there were four different words, which are Chinese characters East, South, West, and North, as shown in the PowerPoint. The design was very special, and it showed the Chinese culture. It was a famous animated version of the Riverside scene at the Qingming Festival and I believe that some of you have seen the one shown in Hong Kong. It introduced the lifestyle of all levels of a society from rich to poor, and it shows different economic activities in rural area and the city. It offered glimpses of the clothing and architectural style in that period of time. China also aims at improving eco-awareness of development in the future. It is hoped that people can have a larger living space and a greener environment in the future. In the exhibition hall with the theme Children's Aspiration, there were lots of pictures showing the thoughts of the children about the future of the city. They were really beautiful and we should create a better world for our next generation. In the area of the film fishing, some recycled materials like can and plastic were used to produce products. Here are some solar panels showing the visitors that China is promoting the concept of being eco-friendly in the citizenship education. We also visited the Italy Pavilion. When we first entered the exhibition hall, we thought that we were really at Italy. You could see a big door and the structure of a palace. We also saw some artificial yet creative designs. The display of an orchestra and the statue of the motorcycles were impressive. We also saw some special designs, such as
such as hanging chairs from the ceiling as decoration and putting different musical instruments on the wall. After walking further in, there were also two fashion models and a display of high technology machine. All this showed the characteristic of the country. This is the Spain Pavilion. The pavilion was built with branches and nets, and it was really environmentally friendly. We enjoyed a dancing performance in a special room. It was a cave with some projections. Then we went to a larger room with some videos showing the life of the people living in Spain. After leaving that hall, we came to the last sections in the pavilion. We first watched some videos about the development of the babies. Then, we came to the most famous part of the Spain pavilion. There was a big baby model with more than a hundred facial expressions. Sometimes it smiled, and sometimes it blinked. It was quite impressive when you look at it far away. However, when I walked closer, I thought it was a bit scary. <laughs> We also visited the Australia Pavilion. We were impressed by an automatic drum about the dream of a boy and a girl. They wished they would enjoy a beautiful natural environment and they would protect and treasure what they were doing. Heaven, sorry. Finland Pavilion introduced the latest technology being used in Finland. All the latest technology was related to environmental protections. I admired the way they enjoy their life based on the concept of being environmentally friendly. Apart from the pavilions of different countries, the few pavilions were worth visiting. This is the pavilions of future. When we entered the exhibition hall, there were some electronic books telling visitors about the basic needs of the human as well as the beautiful environment in our world. The books introduced this aspect in detail with a lot of pictures in interactive ways. Then, it came to a section about the basic elements of a society, such as harmony, home, sustainable development, urban planning and network, etc. There was one model about each of these themes, so that the visitors could understand the messages easier. At the upper level, we saw a big model constructed by a lot of rubbish, such as some old audio equipment and some used telephones. We didn't understand what this meant at first. However, after looking at this shadow, we found that the designer wanted to show how a polluted city might look like. There were also some pictures showing the life of humans in the future. Some of the artists thought that we might live in space, but some thought that we might in the ocean. After entering another exhibition hall, we found a lot of different high-tech products. There were 3D TV and electronic papers. When we used, uh, there was also an advanced toilet. When we used it, it helped us to check the condition of our body. It also showed the statistical information that helped define our health condition. I think it is very useful. At last, it came to a place which showed a model of a renewable energy factory. There are lots of windmills and the background color of the model was green. This symbolized environmental friendliness. I have learned a lot from the, from the education tool. I think we should learn from the mistakes from the past and start protecting our environment. I've seen a lot of creative inventions, such as the eco-friendly cars in Pavilion. In Shanghai, a lot of historical buildings were kept and this led me to get in contact with those historical relics. I think Hong Kong can learn the ways to preserve our historical sites and cultures. Also, I learned to cooperate with others and to be more independent. From this tour, I have learned a lot which we can't get from the books. Before our departure, I thought that there wasn't anything special in Shanghai, except for the Expo and the Oriental Pearl TV Tower. However, after the tour, I discovered that there are lots of unique architectural buildings for our appreciation. 
Also, I understand more about the cultural, commercial, technology development and heritage protection in Shanghai. The speed of development in Shanghai is very rapid. It has a perfect transportation network and its heritage protection is great. As Hong Kong people, we need to improve our competitiveness to keep our position of an international financial center. Let's work hard together. We are thankful that our school provides us such a good opportunity to get the first-hand experience of visiting Expo 2010. We have learned a lot and we hope we can make the world a better place. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bertha and Sam. Overall, our school has done a lot in promoting Expo and encouraged us to participate as much as we can in Shanghai Expo. Students can know more how Shanghai has developed and how Hong Kong can be improved and become a better city. One of the methods is to through sustainable development, which is also emphasized in Expo 2010. Most of the pavilions show their support to it by using renewable resources in their own designs. And sustainable development is also what our school is focusing on. Solar panels and wind turbines were installed in our school so that we can contribute more to being green in school. Expo 2010 also raised my awareness on world events. And I realized that to improve our society environment, we, citizens of the earth, play an important role. We must start from each and every one of us, not just by talking or saying, but by taking action. Both me and Shirley have participated in this Expo project since March 2009. During this period of time, I learned many things that could not be found on textbooks. The project definitely widens my horizons, and the experience will be very useful in my future. Also, Friendship and cooperation skills are treasures I get from this Expo project. World expositions are highly related to us, since we teenagers are the future of the world, and Expo offered us a great opportunity to know more on how we can make the world a better place. We hope the theme can inspire all of us sitting everywhere, every here and in the world. We hope the theme can inspire ourselves, but uh, not only for ourselves, but also for the future generations. The Shanghai Expo 2010 has come to an ideal close. However, the message brought by the Expo, Better City, Better Life, will be always our motto and our goals. To have a better city, all people from different nations have to work and communicate together. It is our pleasure to be able to participate in this project to promote and take part in Shanghai Expo 2010. We hope you enjoy our sharing. May we all have a better city, better life. Have a nice evening. Thank you. And students will introduce them to you. Please also enjoy the refreshment. Thank you for coming and have a nice day. Thank you very much.